Hello and welcome to Bennett's Bike Social. I'm Michael Mann and you join me here on a dreary, damp, cold and dark Monday morning at 7am in West Sussex. Why, I hear you ask? Well, thanks to Suzuki, who sponsored us with the Bergman 400 and the Address 110. We're going to do a little challenge, seeing how these two scooters get on on your sort of your normal commute. So we've got Simon Hargreaves, master of all motorcycle words for the last 30 years, and Ed Gerard from the wine department at Harrods in Knightsbridge. Now, Ed lives here in West Sussex, and, it's, uh, and you've done this commute for how long now? Three and a bit years since yeah. we've been here. And yeah. what, does it, what does it consist of? It consists of either my wife taking me to the station or me walking to the station, then uh, a um, train ride to Victoria from Hayward's Heath, about 44 minutes on the express. Um, and then it's uh, either a walk from Victoria or on a day like today, probably uh, onto the tube. Uh, You're killing me already. <laughs> I can't believe people actually pay for the privilege and they've got the patience to do such a commute. So we're going to see whether it's scooter or whether it's Southern Rail. Let's see how we get on. And away we go. Scooter versus Southern Rail, sponsored by Suzuki. And get this little Suzuki Bergman to work. Six and a half thousand pounds. Over 200 kilos though, it's quite heavy. Single cylinder, 400 cc. 13 and a half litre fuel tank. The claim is 70 miles per gallon. No way, I'm already lost. <laughs> We're rocking! Suzuki Address 110. So that's a 113cc four stroke single with a single overhead cam making around about nine brake horsepower. I'll tell you what, it's wet and it's dark and I've only been riding for five minutes, but already I'm having more fun, I think, than Ed will have on his entire journey. I'm using the Tom Tom Rider. Uh, and that tells me we've got 50 miles to go. It's going to take me 1 hour 37. And my ETA is 8.45. Well, I shall be disappointed if it takes me 1 hour 37 from here. Come on, baby, come on, we can do this, we can do this. We can win, we can do this. Is it just me, or did everybody else actually secretly fancy Caroline Quinton a lot more than Leslie Ash in Men Behaving Badly? I think they did. So I reckon ETA at the back door of Harrods, I reckon, will be 8.30 for us. And I reckon Mr. Man will be there at 8, 8.35, 8.40, it's going to be close. Um, if he does it in less than an hour and a half, I'll be very surprised. We're about to reach Gatwick on the train. I reckon Mr. Man will be at Gatwick in about five minutes behind us. So. I'd say we've overtaken both uh, both Simon and, and uh, Michael by now. You know, people look at Mark Marquez and say, now there's real skill, that's, that's talent we've never seen before. But what they don't realise is that your average scooter commuter aces Mark Marquez every single time they ride their bike. Here we go, motorway. This is going to be such an interesting journey. With the weather as I'm making excuses already, you know. With the weather as it is, I would guess the overall average speed of the traffic is going to be a little less. My understanding is that over a two-year period, Ed would be spending the best part of 10,000 of your English on uh, 
on getting backwards and forwards to his place of work, which seems a trifle expensive to me. And I understand that the, uh, the Suzuki Address 110, retailing at £2,274, but available not on PCP. It's so cheap, you can't even get a PCP deal. On HP, I think you can put about 500 quid down and pay 55 quid for three years. Jobs are good, and the bike's yours at the end of it. Scything through this bit of traffic we've got here, all but stationary in lane one. And what I'm doing is I'm between two and three and trying to work my way forwards because we're down at 30 miles an hour now. Of course, the trains are running on time, then that gives her the advantage to Ed as he's sitting there with his cup of coffee. Oh no, red lights. Here we go, look, straight out of the middle. See you later, traffic. I think it's time to use the advantage of the scooter. Take on some of these M25ers. The address holds a stonking 5.2 litres of gasoline, which Suzuki say will get it uh, over 150 miles, uh, which, is, uh, which is near bad. I think Michael's, we, it was raining when we left, but I think Michael's taking the rain with him on the M23. I've never actually been to Harrods, which will surprise no one. This is a great little commuter bike, you know. I'm nice and comfortable. Oh, I might stretch out a little bit. Ah, yes, that's it. Let's put my feet on those forward foot plates. Hola. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Man. How are you doing? <laughs> Hello, commuter boy. How are you? How are you getting on? Just come off the M25, uh, heading up the A244. It's uh, sat nav's taken me a different route. That was the route that we looked at, so you're going the A224 and then on to the A3. Yeah, I'm darting by the traffic. The M25 wasn't too unkind. M23 was a bit yucky in places, but it's okay, because the scooter just, you can just kind of barrel through. Well, I've, I've got a little bit of good news for you. Um, we've we've hit a signaling error between uh, Purley and East Croydon, so it looks like we're going to be about eight or nine minutes delayed into Victoria. Oh, so, how my yeah. heart bleeds. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm nice I'm nice and warm and doing work and uh, and we'll be at work uh, probably ahead of you. Exactly yeah. Well my sat nav said the ETA was 8:45 and it still is 8:45, so I'm going to be hard pushed. That's going to be tight. It's going to be too late I think. Even with your signalling delay, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. <laughs> be interesting to see how Simon's getting on though, darting through all the little uh, back roads. Yeah, he might actually be on a better better time than you are. All right, mate, I'll let you I'll let you crack on. Good. You go and enjoy your mocha chocolate then. Bye. Bye. The, the sat nav's taken him a different route, so he's uh, he's slung around the M25 and he's now on the road to Oxshot and then he's going to dart in through the A3. Um, his ETA is uh, 845, so I reckon it's going to be touch and go with this delay whether he wins or we win. We have 46 minutes to cover 17 miles apparently with an ETA 8.43, so it's coming down, and da, 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 I think it stopped raining. Look, blue skies, brightness, cheer up, we're in London, we've made it. Yes, that's what we like to see, three lane road, there's lots of free flowing traffic. Do you know what, I'm glad I'm not on a motorway, partly because this thing will get swamped on a motorway. Uh, and partly because motorways are boring and rubbish. Oh, well, the A3 was enjoyable for all of about one minute. We're 16 minutes delayed. We uh, don't have time for coffee. So um, we're going to race to win. But uh, the good news is Michael's also been a bit caught up in traffic. So I reckon it's going to be very tight. Just how Simon is getting on, darting through the, the little squiggly bits. So not, he's not 
using the motorways. Brilliant, all commute, everybody commute, public transport, the lot of yous. And leave the road to the scooters. Scooters of the world, unite. Oh, a right. oh, bus lane, of course. Oh no, I'm snookered. Yes, bonus. Motorbikes can go in bus lanes. And second scooters, of course. Yay! I hope this trip to Harrods is worthwhile. I would like a Harrods goodie bag when I get there. You know, like some, some quality sandwiches and a quality cup of coffee, please. Let's get through this green light. Oh, yeah. Dinner is feeling good. I can smell the finish line now. We've only got about three minutes, so sat now. I reckon we're going to be walking out of Knightsbridge Station at 8.40. Oh, there's Harrods. Well, I can't see a white Bergman anywhere. And I can't see a, an Ed. So I think that makes me the winner. One hour 36 that took. Yeah, I can't beat an Ed, surely. Maybe it did win. Hey. Right, just got to get to the finish line now, which is around the corner. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Ah! Simon Hargreaves! Winner! There's two bikes. I cannot believe it. I genuinely can't believe there are two bikes. I, did he win? Yeah. I thought he would. Unbelievable. Glorious. <laughs> I thought you were going to win when, when we spoke on the train. <laughs> Even if Ed beats me, I'm having more fun than him. No question. Even in the rain, it was just hilarious. The difference is we were nearly 18 minutes delayed into Victoria. 18. Yeah. That, was, uh, that, that would have been tight had we been running on time. That train normally runs relatively cleanly. So... Ah, for, it's probably about 10 minutes in it, night. but how long have you been here for? 10, 15 minutes probably. Yeah. So I reckon, you, I reckon that, that, that you and I, uh, even with the train running absolutely pinpoint on time, yeah. that would have been really close. I couldn't have got from your house to here any faster using that route. I definitely could. <laughs> you could have yeah. ridden it faster. Yeah, I'd, I'd have been nicked through every speed camera, but yeah, I could have got a lot quicker, yeah. But that was a lot of fun, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I, it, was, it just, but that's what a motorcycle is about, right? It, gives you, it just gives you that buzz, especially when you can can get through that that little gap or you can, can get to the front of the light so you can get you know go squeeze through that gap it's just it just gives you a real buzz yeah. I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't do that day in day out <laughs> when I used to uh, walk in walk into an office and you'd ridden there on a motorcycle you did I know it sounds cheesy but you did feel like you were about two inches off the ground you always felt a little bit kind of buoyed by having done something extraordinary the only difference is I guess I got some work done on the train. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a coffee yeah. and yeah. I stayed dry. Yeah. Oh, right. I'm dry. I, I'm, I'm gobsmacked that, I that this little, this little uh, beast managed to make it in before She's me. a good one. She's a good one. As soon as I got on it, I was running thinking, we could do this. Well, I've got two minutes to get into my meeting, so I'm going to say... Thanks for the race. Cheers, boys. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. All right, the hysteria has died down a little bit now, and the, the, the okay. adrenaline is... Calm down. We, we, <laughs> we can reflect a little bit more. And actually, you know what, looking over our shoulders, the size difference between the two, whether that worked to your advantage? Or yeah, not? I, think, I think that probably does, actually. It's the fact that it is a smaller physically bike, and the fact that it isn't, you don't have to think so much about speeding on it. You know, you can just pretty much ride it flat out and not break too many speed limits. So I think it's actually more convenient over that kind of journey. Certainly off motorways and on, on the sort of the A roads. Um, yeah, I, I think that plays into its, into its victory. I cannot believe you won. And that moment when I came around the corner and see you sitting there, I thought, well, that is, I always thought it's going to be between Ed and I. I never win anything, so I'm going to really, really big this yeah, up. Yeah, bask but, in the glory, mate. But, um, 
But I didn't think it would win either. I thought it would be so slow. And it showed like a two hour trip when we set off. It was one hour 54, I think. And it seemed to stay above one hour for so long. And it was that last half an hour in, in the centre of London where it just suddenly evaporated and it seemed to go really quickly. I looked down at clocks, so it's seven minutes to go. And I'm like, wow, that, where did that go? Is that because your sat nav was, was it Google Maps? I was Google mapping it, yeah. So it assumed you were a car? It presumably. assumed I was in a car, but, and, and, and it knew what the traffic situation was. Uh, and obviously the scoot can just literally scoot around all that stuff. Um, it took me a while to figure out I could use the bus lanes. I had to stop and ask somebody. <laughs> you could have won by <laughs> so a bigger it could margin. Have been even more, yeah. yeah and it was, it was really, really good fun. Scooting that through the traffic is hilarious. And it really is a chance to kind of express yourself a little bit, which sounds weird, but, but you can be really, really good at riding in traffic. And that's an achievement. That's almost as good as doing a hot lap time or something on a track day. Um, you get a real sense of satisfaction out of watching other people making mistakes while you're kind of just plotting your route through everything. It's, uh, yeah, I really, really had, had a good time, even in the wet. And there's definitely like home advantage, I think, from following that some of the guys and gals out there who are clearly, they've done it, uh, you know, day in, day out, and you can see where they're taking advantage and where they're nipping through the traffic and where they're, they're, they're clearly in the wrong lane, they can get through and, and just they're taking all the advantages possible. Yeah. And I, it's been 10 years, right, since I did that. <laughs> uh, and I was, I, I'm a little bit, you know, match unfit. Yes. But you soon get back into the zone. And as soon as you start plot seeing those red lights and seeing the, the opportunities and the gaps, yeah. you can soon dart through. And, and I just felt, like you said, just that real rush. I kind of like, oh, I haven't done this for a while. You know, kind of cutting through London or oh, heavy traffic like that. You know, when you kind of like dominate your own space and it's like, stay away, stay away, stay away. You know, you kind of have that zone around you. It's a heck of a trip. And, in, and the, the novelty of one journey just this morning is, is still, it's still in my veins, it's still yeah. coursing through. I suspect it's a, a balance of the financials, isn't it? It's an hour and a half riding a bike. You did some maths and it was gonna cost Ed something like 10,000 pounds roughly a year. If Ed were to buy a, a parking ticket, a season parking ticket at Haywards Heath, that's almost as much as his season ticket, including underground pass. So that over, uh, I think works out as about £5,000 a year. It's just a shade under 11 if you were going to do parking and train with the underground as a package for two years, just under £11,000, which is a significant outlay, isn't it? That's huge. And a similar calculation with the address 110 comes out at around half that. I thought it was slightly less than half that. Pretty much exactly 50%. So my calculation would be balancing my level of risk, the weather, the cost, but so how's the Bergman stack up in terms of cost then? It gives us you a £1,500 advantage over two years. That's not as attractive, it's is it? It's a little it? bit narrower, isn't it? Yeah. The advantage with the Bergman is that you can go on the motorways and it's a bit easier. You've got that, it's, it's, it will happily get to three figures and it will yeah. get there a lot quicker. And it's got heated grips. That's about, that's aftermarket. <laughs> but yeah, on this particular model, that was, that was, a, that was a welcome bonus this morning. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know whether I'd want to do it day in, day out, whether I'd need to. It, it's, it's difficult to balance it up, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah like you said, there's, a, there's probably a happy balance of taking a train a couple of days of the week yeah. and using the scooter as and when you want to and having the convenience and, and actually saving the money. I think the 110 is probably a little bit too small for an hour and a half commute each, each way. That's quite a lot. And I think I'd need something more like the Bergman in terms of it's performance. Because the first thing in the morning, even traveling up the A roads, I mean, was it Godstone Hill? Is it the A22? Right. I'm pedaling, come on, come on, come on, keep going. Um, yeah, it was struggling a little bit. So there are places where I'd want a bit more power. Even with the Bergman though, on those single roads that I encountered, when you were going by the traffic, it didn't feel heavy, cumbersome, wide. It was, it was, it was, it was ideal. Yeah. It was ideal. You know, we've not in any way fudged this, in any way. And it's, it was properly genuine and it, it, it just, it was, it was so exhilarating to find, well, that, that, that motorcycling came first and second. I'm never going to ever, ever say I'd rather take public transport than ride two wheels. I can't do that. I just don't believe myself. Um, so, so no, I'm going to have the scooter every single time. Stuff public transport. I mean, you know, I wish everybody took public transport because then I could just have the road to myself. It'd be perfect. The disadvantages to public transport seem to outweigh the disadvantages of scootering because whether there's a leaf on the line somewhere near Edinburgh and it causes delays on Southern Rail, or whether there's uh, yeah. snow or dog or person, or, you know, yeah. there always seems to be a delay. No, exactly. When you're on two wheels, nothing can stop you. 
<laughs> cool. Thanks, Simon. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I wish Thank I had a trophy you. to present to you. Yeah, where's my trophy? Where's the champagne you know, and the dancing I, girls? Come I really on. didn't think it was going to happen, so I didn't prepare for that bit. <laughs> oh, well. Never cool. mind. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, until next time. Cheers. Hello and welcome to Bennett's Buy Bike Social. Uh, no, it's not even that, is it? I don't know the name of their own company. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs>